Hi folks. Today, um, well, I've been organizing my new uh, workbench for my key machines, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you how a basic key duplicator works. In this case, uh, this is a HPC Mini Speedex, uh, which is a fully manual uh, duplicator. It's fairly bare bones, but it does have a couple of nice features. Uh, one is this very sharp right angled uh, cutting blade, which will allow you to duplicate most common types of cylinder keys, even those with very, very narrow root cuts. Uh, that's things like uh, Abbas and a lot of the other European brands that use a very sharp V-shaped cutter. Uh, basic uh, concept of these is that you will put your original key, uh, which obviously if you're using a duplicator you have to have, uh, in the left hand jaw. That will then ride against this uh, feeler, which is going to control the depth. And in the right hand uh, jaw you are going to put your blank key. That will then press against the uh, cutting wheel. You have a uh, brush here to remove the burrs and uh, chips and things. And then you have the shoulder gauge. All in all, very simple, very robust design. Um, and this basic concept has been around for at least a century. Uh, even the very old uh, Yale key machines worked on essentially the same principle. HPC has just made a few nice little additions like this uh, rotating set of jaws here and here, which allow you to clamp uh, just about any common type of blade style key that you might come across. So uh, first, obviously, we need a working key. Here is uh, one for an aftermarket uh, Mortise cylinder is a Schlage SC1 type key. First thing we're going to do is get that clamped up. Make sure that the back of the key is even with the back of the jaw. That will keep the key nice and even. Then we're going to go to our board of key blanks. And we're going to get that same type of blank off the board. Again, making sure that the back of the blank is even with the back of the jaw. We're going to close that up, lightly clamp it down. Then we're going to fold the shoulder gauge out. Make sure that it contacts the shoulder on the original key. And then we are going to push the uh, blank against the shoulder gauge and tighten down those jaws. Flip that up out of the way, and now we are ready to cut. We're going to switch the machine on, so uh, if you have headphones or whatever, now might be a good time to turn the volume down. Now, because this is a manual machine, we don't have a spring assist or anything, so we're just going to use our hand very carefully to lift the carriage, and we're going to grasp against the uh, the feeler, gu the depth guide, as a stable and safe place to hold it, because we don't want our hands near all of these moving parts. So we're going to move this up so that the feeler gauge is going to contact just in front of the shoulder of the key like so, and then we're going to move left, and then we're going to move right to left with the cutter. Press in lightly, and move slowly along. When you get to the end of each cut, release pressure a little bit so that the guide, so that the guide just rides along the slope of that cut very slowly.
And there we go, that's our first pass. We're gonna go move back to the right without contacting the blade. And we're going to do another pass. Again, moving very slowly and carefully, making sure that the feeler, that the depth guide is always in contact with the key. If it lifts off, move back and go over that portion again, still moving the carriage uh, right to left. Now, going to remove the blank from the jaw. It's looking pretty good, but we've got some burring there. We're just going to lightly run it against the brush. Make sure that that is thoroughly cleaned up. Now we can turn the machine off and let's test our key. If the machine is correctly calibrated, it should work just as well as the original key that we copied. Now, with just about any duplicator, you do need to periodically calibrate this. Um, depending on the volume of keys that you're cutting, that might only be once a month or something. If you're working in a busy uh, shop, you're cutting dozens or even hundreds of keys every day, you're going to probably want to calibrate your machines at least once a week, sometimes daily. Uh, if you're really doing lots and lots and lots of keys uh, every day, daily calibration is going to be your friend because it's going to keep people uh, from coming back demanding refunds or replacement keys for the keys that you cut that didn't work because your machine was out of calibration. I just finished calibrating this. I've got it down to within a thousandth of an inch, uh, which is about as good as you're going to get a duplicator like this. The modern high-end computerized ones can sometimes get more accuracy out of it, but uh, doing it all manually, that's uh, pretty darn good. So, until next time, folks, have fun, stay safe, and happy picking.